Right, well done, guys. We're warmed up. We're ready to learn. So, just to reiterate, let's close this. Uh, let's look on the left-hand side here. Just to reiterate, exclamation. Uh, I can make this full screen. Exclamation worksheet in the chat will give you uh, the worksheet. You'll get access to this document here that I'm working on. Okay, please get it open. Work alongside with me. Work in ahead of me is even pref more preferable. And then you can um, check with what I'm doing as we go along. Okay, good. Let's do it. So let's get into it. This should be a nice quick lesson, a little bit of recapping from yesterday. But let's have a look here. So we're going to complete the following patterns. Can you see this okay? It's not too zoomed out. I can't make it much better. I can if you really want it zoomed in more. Right. So complete the following patterns. We've got, uh, I've changed the, the way this looks now. So instead of it being X and Y going across ways, I've just done it downwards just to change things up. So we've got an X and a Y. Um, you can see between here and here, we're going up by three, and up by three, up by three, up by three. So this is going to become three, six, and nine. All good. And I'm going to complete this other table first, and then we're going to answer those three questions. Seven, four, one. We're going down by three each time. You can see that, minus three. So this is going to be minus two and minus five. Tell me if you think I did it wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And now we can answer these questions here, the starting point and the step. So remember the starting point is always, let's get a nice highlighter and even got this. The starting point is always at x equals zero. So in this case, the starting point is three. And our step is how much it's changing each time. In this one, the step is positive three. So in this case, remember y equals mx plus c, where m is the step, so we're going to have y equals 3x, and the starting point is c plus 3. So far, so good. Right, can you please tell me the starting point and the step for the next one? I will wait. I'll have a sip of my nice cool water. I'm going to wait for the chat. I want a starting point and a step, please. And if you're really up for it, the equation. Chat will blow up. I know there's a delay, such as life. Chat will pop off in like two seconds. There we go. There you go. Perfect. We've got a one from someone as a starting point. Good. Jan Jan, you're right. Starting point is one. Eamon, give me the step, which is minus three. I agree. And that means our equation is going to be what? y equals minus 3x plus 1. Yeah, we all make mistakes. That's fine. Right, so far, so good. Right, chat's a little bit quiet. Please comment if, you, if you're if you doing things. Huh? I'd love it. It makes my life way easier. Why is it 1? So let's have a look. So we only care the starting point starts at 0, at x of 0. So when x is 0, y is 1, so that's our starting point there. Same thing over here, when x was 0, y was 3, so our starting point was 3. Got it, awesome. Good. Now, plot the two equations on the graph paper below by plotting the x and y coordinates. So let's, I'm going to do this one in orange, okay? So y equals 3x plus 3, but let's plot each of these points individually. So have a look over here. We've got an x column and a y column, which means each one of these can be written as a set of coordinates like that. So let's plot these coordinates. So minus 2 and minus 3. Minus 2 on the x, minus 3 on the y is going to be there. This stuff all over my iPad. Uh, let's look at the next one. Minus 1 on the x. 0 on the y is going to be there, 0 on the x, 3 on the y, and then 1 and 6 goes off the page. So we can see we've got a nice line here, and I'm going to draw it by connecting these dots with a nice straight line, boom. 
almost perfect. Let's fix it. Ah, uh, it's so hard to do a nice straight line without a ruler. Right, that's good. I can just move it slightly. There we go. Okay, exclamation worksheet. Uh, query exclamation worksheet. Um, and let's look at, I'm going to plot this other one in a nice little pink. So let's plot this one in pink. And we're going to do the same thing. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Please, here's my question. Please let me know if you're confused by any of this. Right, extreme logic. Wait, why do the numbers go up by three and down by three in each row? No, it's not always like that. It's just this situation. Right, I've just set it up like this. It just happens to be like that because we've got a let me use this a positive three here and a minus three here. So in this one, the step is three, so it's going up by three each time. This one, the step is minus three, so it's going down by three each line. It's just the table I set up just by chance that it's like that. And we'll look at more examples of it not being like that. Let's do these ones. So we've got coordinates of minus two and seven. That's going to be off our page. What about minus one and four? That'll be here. Zero and one is going to be there. One and minus two is there. And two and minus five we've got there. Good logic, good. So now if I draw this as a straight line, perfect. You can see we have a straight line there. It's all good. No worries for coming late. You're here, that's the main thing. Are we happy with these two lines here? Please ask any questions now. How we got, how I got these two, how I got the dots, how I got the crosses, where I got the coordinates from. Any questions? If you're confused, if you're feeling good, um, spam a happy email or something like that. Yeah, just ask your question, dude. Can you have an equation that describes both lines simultaneously? No. Doesn't really make sense. You could have two equations that describe both lines simultaneously, but you can't do both. Good question though. That's interesting. I've never thought about it like that. I will for a bit. Right. So, what we've done here is we have used, I'm going to, um, I'm going to write up here actually. So we have gone from a table to a graph and the method we used, let's see here, the method we used is plotting points. And this method is actually so good. People underrate it, right? But it's such a good method. It's um, it's foolproof. It's the most straightforward. It's a little bit hard, like it's a little bit long, but it always works. You set up a table. You make the x and y. You dot 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 dot. Connect the dots. It'll always work, no matter what. If you have a weird line, anything, it'll always work. Now, what we're going to learn today is from our table to our graph. We're going to use a different method. And the method is going to be forming the equation. Thanks for the follow, Sheepy. Appreciate it. Forming the equation and using our knowledge of this. Our knowledge of this to draw the straight line. Okay. Let's give me two seconds. Let's um, insert this over here. So I've got another page to work on. Good. Now let's talk about the equation of a straight line. Okay. Red pen. Equation of a straight line. Now if you're, if you're writing notes, which I recommend you do, copy this in. Go from there. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate the follow, dude. Right. The equation of a straight line, <coughs> we're going to look at it like this, right? Y equals, let's make the font a bit bigger, Y equals M, 
x plus c. Now we talked about this m. Previously we've called this m the step, right? Because that's the most, um, the easiest way to wrap our head around it, right? This is the step, how much it goes up each time. Okay, and we've also called this the starting point, right? where we start on the graph. Now, if you already know it, say it in chat, but in terms of what this means graphically, we can talk about this what the M means in terms of graphically and what, let's go this color and I'm going to even put it in here graphically what do these two letters mean? Right. Good, so we've got Eamon talking about the gradient and Extreme Logic saying what is the gradient? Perfect, right? Because we're going to explore that now. So the step by definition is what we call the gradient and now because it's a new word, let's explain what it means. We've got some people slamming a spamming slope. We've got y-intercept, which is the other part, which is good. So our slope, or the gradient, the gradient by definition is the slope, right? The angle of our line. Not really spamming. But, uh, spam just means more than one, <laughs> right? So gradient by definition is the slope like this, right? It can formulaically, we can call it rise over run. Is this color okay to see? Yeah, not too bad. But we can also say it is the slope. Okay. How is rise over running? We'll talk about it soon. Just trust me on this. Okay. Just trust me. Right. And our starting point, we call our y intercept which is by definition where the line intercepts the y-axis reasonably straightforward definition so our equation y equals mx plus c let me use my little laser pointer our equation y equals mx plus c our m We've talked about our step. Our m is our step. And our step, by definition, is how much it goes up for every unit it goes across, which is rise over run. Okay. And c is our starting point, which graphically means our y-intercept, which by definition is where the line intercepts the y-axis. Let's look at an example and have a look. Let's look at these two. We yeah, let's look at these two first. So the orange graph we've got here. We can look at this orange graph. Let's find out the gradient. Which by definition rise over run. Now rise over run is found by looking at how much it goes up or down over how much it goes across. Uh, extreme logic. Three is not, so when I say it's the angle, it's not, it's not that the gradient is the angle, but the gradient like determines the angle. The, the angle is not three degrees. Right? The gradient is not, it's not like gradient equals angle. It's that the angle of the line is determined by the gradient of the line. I see I see the confusion. So this run is one. It goes across one. It goes up three. So our rise over run equals three over one, which in this case is three. And if we go back up here and have a look, you can see that my gradient is three. Yes, extreme, you're perfectly right. Angle increases with the slope and vice versa for sure. Let's have a quick look at this other one now. Pick any two points. The run is one, and the rise here is actually minus three. So to do rise over run, we do minus three over one, which equals 
minus 3. And we can see that we've found the gradient of minus 3 which matches the gradient of the equation. We'll ignore the y-intercept set for now, let's because we run out of sort of space on that paper. Let's have a look at this. Right? Let's do this one in pink first. Y equals two x minus three. So the y intercept is determined by minus three. I want to go like this. Y intercept equals minus three. As exclamation commands shark. So the y intercept is minus three. You see what I'm saying here? This graph crosses the y axis at minus three. So we've got our starting point. Perfect. Once we've got our starting point, we need our gradient or our slope or our step. Lots of ways to think about it. And this says that the step or the gradient we can even say gradient equals 2 which is our rise over run equals 2 over 1 so let's have a look at this our rise is 2 so I'm gonna go up 2 and our run is 1, I'm going to cross 1 and put a dot there. Up to, across 1, dot. And I can do that forever. Up to, across 1, dot. Up to, across 1, dot. Up to, across 1, dot. And you could even see the pattern. Back 1, down 2, dot. Draw a straight line that matches all of those. And you've got, you've just plotted this equation without having to create a table. You with me so far? Please ask any questions now and I, while I read this comment. Okay, so you have y equals 2x minus 3. You know the point 0 minus 3 is on there when you have the line y x plus c. The point 0 c is on the line, right? Yes, you're right. Extreme logic is with me. Hooligan is kind of with me, I think. Rise is how much it goes up, run is how much it goes across. So I want you to try and do the second line here yourself if you can, using the same logic. Into our y-intercept in this case is 0. There is no number on the end. And our gradient in this case is minus 4. So we know we start at 0 and we go our rise over run is going to be minus 4 over 1. Yeah, it's exactly like that. So we go across 1 and down 4 in this case. And I could do it again if I could, but I can't go any further because I've run out of room. So I can see that I went across 1, down 4. If I went backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'd have to go back 1 and up 4. And if we plotted that, we have a nice straight line. Oof. It's not a very good straight line. That's a bit better, kind of. That's kind of okay ish. Right. How are you finding that? Not too bad. Question time. Before we look at something else, I'm going to go like this. And we're going to have a look at something over here. So we've, we've, we've just sort of explored how to, um, how to go from an equation to a graph, right? And this is a hard process. You're going to be assessed on this in two different ways. Firstly, in your internal, 
And secondly, all of you are going to do a TEG external, and you've got to be able to do this. Right? So we're double dipping. This is important knowledge. So let's have a little look here. Let's ignore these. See this equation here. Can you guys see this okay? Yeah, you should be able to. Right. I've got a formula. <laughs> I didn't think Lizard was from here. Um, I'm a teacher. Yeah, we'll go over this in class. I don't know who Akira is, but um, we will go over this in class. But hopefully if you've got this preloaded already, you'll understand it like this. So, if we have a look at this, right, I've got this formula, y equals mx plus c, and these things is what I've t I've said m and, and c are. What I'm trying to say is, this line, y equals 1x plus 1, is the same as y equals mx plus c when I change these to 1 and 1. If I change this to 2, you can see it moves up. Right? And 3. Because what we're doing as we change this number is as we increase the y-intercept, you can see the graph moves up. It doesn't change the angle of the graph, but the intercept keeps lifting. And as we go down, we don't change the angle or the slope of the graph, but the intercept goes down. Does this make sense? Let's just leave it plain for a second. Right? Does this make sense? You can see the y-intercept is going up and going down. It looks like the graph is moving left and right, but it's kind of not. If you track, I want you to just track along this line with your eyes. Right, I'll try it with my mouse. Um, I don't know, go soon enough. Like that. Why does it keep changing, keep changing, keep changing, keep changing? Right? So technically it is just moving up. Right? It looks like it's moving left and right because it goes to infinity in both directions. Right? That's the weird part. But it is interesting, I agree. So let's change this back to 1. Right? And let's look at M. I want some some thoughts. What's going to happen as I increase M, please? Extreme Logic, you're exactly right. I want some, some thoughts on what's going to happen as we increase M. As we increase M, the gradient, the slope, what's going to happen to the line? I don't care if you're wrong. Just have put something in the chat. And I'll read Extreme Logic saying it says, It seems that by knowing the slope and a single point through which the line passes, you know the entire line. Exactly right. In fact, if you know the slope and the y-intercept, you've got the equation for the line like that. So it's, we've got two comments in the chat. So I've said what happens as I increase m. Right? We've got the slope will change. We've got as you increase m, I think the line will continue to pass through 0, 1. It'll pivot about 0, 1. And it creates a wider angle. Let's just do it and see what happens. Is this what you're expecting? The angle gets sharper and sharper. The slope gets steeper. Right? The slope gets steeper. As we increase the gradient, the slope gets steeper. And as we decrease the gradient, it gets less steep. Until at one point, boof, it rotates all the way around. And that's when we've got a negative gradient. So a negative gradient is a line falling down. A positive gradient is a line going up. And going between the two is that motion. And it's put it on. Right? And it goes like this. Making sense? Right. Is your mind blowing? Now what's real crazy is if we just press both at once. Whoa. Whoa. This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I I know I know what you're saying, the extreme logic. It seems to change a lot quicker. I think it comes from 
I'd have to think about that one for a bit longer. It's it's that each this is a bit too much this is a bit more than you need, but let's have a think about this. When M is one, right? What he's saying is that when when we play this video or this thing, it goes it sort of changed slowly then real quickly then slowly again and then real quickly right um, I think the reason behind this is because each change in the gradient is let's make this one each change in the gradient is the square here right and so when you increase the gradient up by one the next the next line here x of one goes up to three and if I do another one, it'll go to 4, and 5, and 6, and 7, right? And if we make this 0, it'll be easier to understand, right? Now, the changes here to here are much more significant than way at the top, your your angle that you're changing through is real small, because it's really far away, the, the, the changes. That's how I would like to think about it. It's really hard to explain without being there with you. But hopefully that kind of makes sense. But you don't need to know that. I just want you to understand that as we increase the gradient, the angle gets steeper, or the slope gets steeper. And as we decrease the gradient, it gets less steep until it becomes negative, where it changes the slope entirely. It becomes a negative graph. Are we cool with that? All right, thumbs up in the chat. I don't know, can you thumbs up? Big brain in the chat, if you understand. And that's going to help us to answer these questions here and then we're basically done okay nice short lesson I just want us to grasp this and then you've got some things what if y is undefined what do you mean for y is undefined I need more of an explanation right let's answer these questions whilst I wait for Lizard's question what happens to the line when you increase the gradient? Thoughts? We can experiment here. As we increase the gradient, the slope gets steeper. And I might even draw a picture of what this looks like. goes like this right when the gradient is negative weapons to line when you decrease the gradient the slope gets shallower is the opposite of steeper isn't it shallower which looks like this moves in this direction can we even like will it look more artistic if we go like this slightly curve them I'm not very right and let's put a note in here when the gradient goes negative we end up with the slope changes the direc direction. You with me so far? Last two questions and then we're done. That's all I really want to cover. Real brief. What happens to the line when you increase the y-intercept? So the line moves upwards the whole thing shifts up and if we decrease the y-intercept the line moves downwards in this direction, the whole thing comes down. 
You with me so far? So far so good. Spam positive vibes in the chat if you're happy. And your homework is going to be choose any nine and do them. I'm going to do one of them for you. I'm going to do this one for you here. Yeah, we got some, what's this, seems good. Got some seems good in the chat. We're pretty happy. Right. I'm going to do this one here for you because it's different to what we've seen before and the rest we'll do. Um, let me, I want to take this image. I can probably... Oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, give me two seconds. Let me just. Uh, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. I gotta do this. I gotta select that. Delete that. I gotta go here. And then I've got to cancel that. Add that. In here. And let's even crop it, edit. There you go, you can see what I'm doing now. Crop. Bring it down like this. Done. Right. Let's draw. What's the equation? Y equals 2 over 5x minus 1. Okay, we're going to do this now, and then we're done. And you should be able to do those nine of those questions for homework. So, let's start with the minus 1 part. The minus 1 tells us where do we start and the rise over run. I'm going to do this. Rise over run equals 2 over 5. Which means, from here I go across 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And up to 1, 2. And do a dot. And across five, one, two, three, four, five, and up two, and do a dot. Okay? So you get our starting point, and then we do our steps. You can see it, it's literally steps. And we could do that in the opposite direction too. We could carry on this trend. And if I drew a straight line, there you go. Now the other way you could do it is by creating a table, plotting points, but this is much easier. If you understand this, this is easier. If you don't understand it, the other way is easier. Right. That's everything I want to teach you. Do you have any questions? It's getting so warm in this room. Do you have any questions? Do you think you can tackle nine of these? Choose any nine. Exclamation worksheet to get the worksheet. And that means you've got a little bit of homework. You can just set up a grid in your books and plot it out. Right, I'll stick around for five minutes. Questions, thoughts, queries, confusion or feedback sir this was not helpful sir this is too easy let me know remember it's going to be uploaded as a video if you found some bits too hard you can just rewind go again well, chat's gone dead uh, that might be a good sign a lot of people still here clay found it helpful good clay i want to know who's from my class as well here because i feel like there's not that many from my class surely sims here and if sims here Nornor's probably here i'm assuming aemon is aemon 
I'm guessing Afro might be Sim. Just seems like a name you might go for. I'm just guessing. Yeah, it looks like we're all clear, making sense. Put exclamation worksheet. There's the worksheet, guys. So you can access this whole document here. Untouched by me. And you can do it yourself. Oh, tired. Right, we happy? We good? Easy. Well, that's us. That was 45 or 51 minutes. But 45, basically. Done. Cool. Well, thanks for tuning in, team. Hopefully that was helpful again. Um, last one will be tomorrow. And we'll be looking at something a little bit more similar to what your internal might look like. Oh, it'll be some... So, oh, sorry. <laughs> We're looking at some context, I think. So it'll be, I might give you three or four contextual type questions. We've got to plot some graphs and then understanding what the graph's telling us. And that'll be it. That's your holiday, or that's your work done. For the holidays, I recommend accessing the maths website, doing the work out of the textbook, or Education Perfect. There's so many resources out there for you to use. Go hard, learn lots, and come back from the isolation ready to rumble. Cool, that's it. No one wants to talk to me anymore. That's fine, I'm done. I'll see you later. Thanks for tuning in. Cool beans. Cool beans. Right, enjoy the work. Exclamation worksheet in the chat. It'll always work as well, even if I'm offline. Exclamation worksheet will still work, um, I think, maybe. Um, but thanks so much. Heart is here. Good, good, good. Hopefully that's easy for you. And have a good one. See you later. Thanks for watching.